Yo guys, this is Josh or Milky from the Torchlight Max Roll team and welcome to the full City of Eterna guide. City of Eterna is the new seasonal mechanic and in this video I'll be covering the basics of the mechanic, how to spend your Psalms of Eterna, how to target farm valuable candles and what awaits you in the endless City of Eterna. Now the City of Eterna becomes available as early as chapter 1. Every zone you will encounter a monument of Eterna. This is how you're going to gain access to the Ruins of Eterna, where you will complete different challenges to build a path through the city before eventually entering the city, conquering it, claiming all the loot, and defeating the boss. Now, the goal of your pathing is to connect to the boss room and then as many reward tiles as possible, because the more reward tiles you have, the more rewarding the boss. Now, when you interact with the monument, this will reveal the Eterna map. A 3x3 grid, initially a 2x2 grid, further split into groups of 3x3 three three tiles. To fill these rooms, you're going to complete the ruins encounter that you will find in the map. The marks of the ruins is what you're going to place in these slots to build that pathway. To get the marks, when you click on the monument, you can select from one of two options. The first one is a smaller room. It's going to have four tiles connected, which, as you can imagine, makes it much more difficult to connect to the adjacent rooms. But to compensate for this, it actually doubles any rewards that it is placed on top of. The second, and the one you're probably going to use the most, is six tiles. So this is much easier to create a route with, much easier to connect to adjacent nodes, but it will not increase the value of any rewards it's placed upon. So that's going to be the one you use the most. You're going to stick to using the first option as a way to juice up any valuable reward you find. Maybe you get a really high tier candle node or a really high tier flame fuel node. These are going to be the ones you want to try and multiply by two. But after gaining all your marks of ruins and filling out all the rooms, you'll be able to place a few additional tiles. So keep this in mind when you're building it. You can place one extra tile at the end by default, and this can go up to three. So you can really min-max your pathing, leave some unconnected nodes so that you can place these tiles at the end and grab an extra reward or two. So here is a city that I had prepared, and I have 17 boss strength. What this means is there are 17 loot tiles on this board. Now this boss strength scales on intervals of five rewards so five rewards will result in the boss having five percent additional drop quantity and drop more pages of eterna at 10 the boss will have an increased chance to drop a legendary exclusive gear and also five percent additional quantity and then at 15 you will be able to drop a queen's wick which is an invitation to the new boss fight as well as gaining that drop quantity and more pages and then finally at 20 if you're lucky enough to get there you'll get five percent more drop quantity and also drop more pages. So this is why it's so important to get as many rewards as possible, not only for the rewards they grant, but also to increase the loot from the boss because the pages of Eterna are the most important thing that you want to get as this will allow you to fill out the Psalms of Eterna. The Psalms of Eterna is a massive skill tree where you can fill in the nodes in order to improve your encounter within the ruins or the city or to manipulate the types of candles that you drop. So let's start off by talking about where you want to go first. It's important to keep in mind straight away that the ultimate goal of this skill tree is to allocate one point in every single node. This is because it's how you unlock the endless city of Eterna. This is unlocked by placing one point in every single node on the tree. This includes the big nodes here on the side and the bottom. So you do need a lot of pages to do this, which is why it's so important to kill that boss at a high power level if you can. Now for starting off, the first thing you're going to want to do is come down, go through Queen's Heart and grab Half Taboo. This gives you a second candle slot, which is very important as candles offer a huge amount of power to your character. So grab your second candle slot, slot in a second candle and you're going to gain all those stats. Next, we want more pages. Pages are the most important thing. So coming up to the left, you'll see this legendary node right here, the Queen's Portrait. This is going to mean that all the bosses in the ruins that you're going to be doing each and every beacon are going to have a 50% chance to drop one additional page of Eterna. And at this stage, we're going to start unlocking the entire tree. The nodes that unlock the rest of the tree are these ones here. They're shown with this little chain icon, and there are five of them in total. Three on the right, the right side is all the city-specific nodes, and then three on the left. This is where you can add monsters to the ruins and the city, and we're going to start by going right. And the reason for this is not only do we get to expand our city with the expansion nodes at the top and bottom, but we also get to add on additional Eterna tiles. These are the small passives that you can add after filling in all your marks of ruins to fill in any connections you might have missed or grab additional reward tiles. So very, very important to get as the more rooms and more tiles you have, the more rewards and more power you're going to be able to give to that boss at the end. So definitely head onto the right side first, come down, grab your King's Boon, 
your expansion and do the same at the top. After doing this, you want to head to the left and do the exact same thing. It mirrors each other. So the same nodes you grabbed over here, come and grab on the left. And after doing so, you will have nine areas unlocked and have three additional tiles to place every single city. Now at this point, as I mentioned, you do want to start allocating points in every single node. So start by grabbing all the serenade nodes. This will give you an increased chance to double pages. And in the long term, this is going to be the best option here because we're going to get more pages and it might seem like a small chance, but it will start to add up over a lot of cities. So the three points that you want to grab are serenade. And then I would come to the top left and grab Fang. Fang has a chance to add a shackle of a turner into the ruins. There are three points, grab the legendary one, put one point in two of the blue ones, and you're gonna have a chance to summon an additional boss in the ruins. And this is important because of the point we took earlier. Queen's Portrait, a 50% chance for bosses in the ruins to drop an additional page. These count as bosses towards this node. So adding in bosses with these points is very good. After grabbing these points and having those additional bosses in your map, you've increased the number of pages you're going to be getting, as well as getting the board fully unlocked. So now it's time to focus on the candles you're going to be dropping. Now down at the bottom here, you'll see 24 additional nodes that can be specced freely as soon as you unlocked the adjoining sickness node. So you have four nodes and each of them has a type of affix attached to it. And what this does is allows you to block affixes from being rolled on your candles when they drop. So here you are blocking modifiers. You are not selecting the ones you want to drop. You are selecting the ones you don't want to drop. So my build is a physical channeling aura trigger skill build. So I have aura skills, trigger skills, imbue skills, channel skills, and of course, physical. That is why I have those and every other node is allocated to block all of them from dropping. So you're going to have to do some research or have a think about what kind of mod you want and block the others. You can block 19 out of 24 in total and then you can really target farm those candles that you want I, I can attest after doing this for a lot you will get tons of good candles and the next step will be learning which t1 modifiers combine into which t0 modifiers that you want as of right now we don't have a comprehensive list of which modifiers combine into which other modifier but that will be coming in the future and i will try and link it to this video when I've discovered them all. So when you've done all that and you have your candle sorted and you're dropping the ones that you want, you're going to finish by allocating a point in every unselected node on the tree. This is probably going to be things like rarity, quantity. You'll come up here and finish grabbing all these. And then finally, grab the nodes on the side. Now these are 200. This is going to be the final slog, so to speak, before reaching the endless city of Eterna. But it is worth it. Get one in each three of the nodes and then you have access to the infinite city of Eterna. It will cost 100 points to allocate this middle node, and from that point on, the endless city will be available to you. Now, the endless city of Eterna allows you to climb through the tiers. You'll start all the way back at level one, and it will give you 5% drop quantity and additional chance for monsters and bosses to drop additional things within the city. It is much more difficult, and you can only enter it if the average area level of the zones that you have run is 84 or higher. So you do have to be running T8s, but it is well worth it if your build is capable of doing it. So you'll start out at tier 1, and every completion will increase the tier by 1. As you can see, here I've gone all the way up to 46, but we'll show some things here. At 21, it actually increases, so you get more drop quantity at 21. And then at 41, you get additional drop quantity, as well as the ability for monsters to drop fluorescent memories, or additional fluorescent memories. So as you climb through and climb these ranks, it is going to get much, much more rewarding however it is very difficult so your build's going to be quite need to be quite min maxed if you get to this point you are going to need a build capable of clearing very difficult content so keep that in mind and if you want if you don't like how difficult it's getting at any point you can return to a previous tier and run it on that now finally let's return to the psalms of eterna and point out a specific node is very important and this is right here it's called intertwined destiny and this means that your soul candle fusion will be available in town this is important as soul candle fusion is kind of the end game progression of this mechanic it's how you're going to get these incredibly strong candles and i'm going to show you how they work so you can select one candle right here to place into the first slot we have critical strike damage if you defeat an enemy recently 44 percent damage and three percent aura effect and here is going to light up any modifiers that we have a duplicate of so you're looking for modifiers of the same tier and the same affix because combining them potentially become a tier zero modifier. So you can see here we have duplicates, but they're not the same tier 
and none of them are damaged. So let's go back and find another one. And we actually have two additional regain intervals. So you'll see that these have a blue and a purple mark, whereas the others have a yellow. That's because these have no duplicates. So if you click this button right here, you'll be able to read what this does. Once melted, the remaining affixes would be retained or vanished. This seems to be a 50-50 chance. The position of the mod on the candle in my testing so far does not seem to be relevant as to whether or not it transfers to the newly fused candle. So keep that in mind. It doesn't actually matter all that much where the modifiers are. Now the blue modifier present on this one means that when fusing these candles of the identical tiers, they can be upgraded or downgraded. So you could potentially turn this tier one into one tier two or you could upgrade it into a powerful T0 affix. So here are the potential outcomes we can get from combining minus additional regain. We have 100 waiting for the additional damage taken or the injury buffer, then 100 waiting for it to just stay the exact same, and then 90 waiting for it to become T2. So more often than not, you're going to get one of the T0 affixes. Purple means they can mutate, and the mutated possibilities can be viewed here. These are all the mutations they appear provide you with an additional support gem on your main skill so you'll be able to get different things in here as well as granting very very powerful mods such as actual major talent so things like rebirth or barrier of radiance adaptation these seem to be very rare i've hit one out of hundreds of candle fuses so getting the perfect one is definitely going to be difficult as the candle themselves cannot be traded so let's see what happens when we fuse these and we'll see what we get So we did upgrade it into that T0 modifier, getting 20% injury buffer. And that is the basis of how you're going to make your candle. So you want to identify these powerful T0 modifiers. For example, my build wants its 2% damage, skill area, movement speed for every enemy I've defeated recently. Now be warned though, these powerful bonuses do come with an equally powerful downside. However, these downsides are quite specific. And for your build, there are plenty that won't affect you in any way. For example, I don't spend any mana, so losing mana really does not matter to me i just care about this buff right here so the ultimate end game is definitely going to be combining multiple t0 modifiers having a candle with three tier zero modifiers as these mods are very very powerful and that is going to be the end game chase so good luck with your candle fusions i hope this video has helped you understand more about the city of eterna and everything that awaits you if you go to endless if you did enjoy this video make sure to give it a like subscribe share it with a friend who is also playing this new torchlight season and keep an eye out for future videos.